Hey what's up my name is Joe and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this using the pixel stretch technique in Photoshop. This is my third video in the series where I break down the process behind creating my artwork. If you want to check out the other videos in the series I'll drop a link in the description. Also leave me a note in the comments if there are any other speed art videos you want me to break down in the future. And if you enjoyed this breakdown please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Before we jump in, I want to give a shout out to Hannah O'Flynn who I collaborated with on this project and Danny Sodier for their original photo. For this piece, I knew I wanted to make it feel dramatic to play off the look and lighting from the original photo. I also wanted to convey movement and thought the variation of the pixel stretch would work out. The first step was to mask out Hannah from the background. I ended up using Photoshop's built-in background remover and refined the mask with the brush. To create the mirror look, I duplicated the layer and flipped it vertically. Next, I opened a new square document. In order for the circular stretch to be perfectly round, it needs to be created in the square canvas. I then dragged the copy of the image layer onto the new document. Next, I copied sections from the image that I would later use to source the pixel stretch. And since I wanted there to be gaps along the stretch, I spaced out all the cuts. Once I copied over the different pieces, I selected the layers and merged them. Then I took the single row marquee tool and selected a section from the merged layer. Then copy and pasted the selection to a new layer. And while having that layer selected, I brought up the transform tool and dragged out the bounding box while holding down option shift. After that, I stretched it vertically so it would take up about two thirds of the canvas. Next, I turned the stretch layer and the random fill layer into a smart object. I like to use smart objects in case I have to go back and make adjustments without having to repeat all these steps. Next, I added a polar coordinates filter by going to the filter menu, down to distort and selecting polar coordinates and then clicking OK. And then to make the gaps in the circle transparent, I open up the smart object, turn off the background layer and save it out again. Before dragging the circle to the main document, I embedded the circle in another smart object. This helps keep the polar coordinates effect from breaking up once it's in a non-squared canvas. After bringing in the circle to the main file, I adjusted the placement and created a copy to mirror at the bottom. Then I added mask to each of the layers and brushed away the areas I didn't want showing up. Next, I had to figure out how to connect the circles. So I went back to the smart object to grab the original pixel stretch and copied it over to the main file. Using the circle as a guide, I transformed the height of the pixel stretch to match the lines and gaps of the circle. Once I got it all lined up, I rotated the pixel stretch layer to a 45 degree angle. I soon realized that the colors of the angled lines wouldn't match the bottom circle, so I needed to recreate the circle with the lines inverted. To do that, I went back to the smart object, flipped the pixel stretch vertically, and saved it out. But instead of saving all the way back to the original document, I dragged it in as a new smart object. This way, it wouldn't affect the original circle that's on the top. And next, I spent some time lining up all three objects with the help of the transform tool and a bit of masking. After getting everything lined up and set, it was time to start adding some shadows and lighting. I first started by grouping the S-shaped pixel stretch into a folder. I then added a new layer and clipped it to the folder to begin adding some shadows. I then grabbed a large soft brush and set the opacity to around 10%. Then I started to paint in the shadows. I then wanted to add a second shadow with a little bit more definition. I created a silhouette that was filled with black and moved it to the left and added some blur. Next, I added some highlights coming from the right side. And in a new layer, I set the blending mode to soft light and started to paint in the highlights using the light color. Next, I created a large light source leaking in from the right side. For this, I used a large brush and played around with the shape and opacity until I got it to somewhere I liked. I played around with different background colors, but ended up going with this darker warm color in order to give it more of the dramatic feel that I was going for. Now with the new background color, the glow on the right was looking a little bit too white. So I changed the blending mode to soft light and brought the opacity down. I then created a new light source layer. I picked more of a peach color and with the blending mode set to soft light, I painted in a warmer glow over top. To finish this up, I added a bit of noise texture over top. To increase the contrast, I adjusted the glow on the right and added some darker shading on the left side of the canvas. 
All that was left to do was to add a levels adjustment and a bit of color grading and it was done. So I hope this video inspires you to create your own art. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. With that said, thanks for watching and keep creating.